Okay, so I think the recording is already up. So again, uh, just good evening and welcome to uh, this uh, class. We are continuing from where we left yesterday, and there's a couple of things that we are actually going to be talking about. And uh, let me just close this one here. Uh, just close a couple of things here. And uh, I will close many more here, but I think I will be uh, likely to just close these other ones here. And uh, yeah, so I think that's good. I just wanted space to be able to yeah close that. So again, welcome to today's class. Remember, we are still on IP static routing. And like I explained yesterday, if you watch that video, the video was very resourceful. We did a very intensive, um, a very intensive uh, uh, diagnosis of what static routing is. What does routing mean to the router? Remember, the router has a table. The router has a table that we call static. I mean, we call uh, the routing table, routing table. And whatever we did yesterday, we said that the router's idea is always one. The router needs to learn about the remote networks, okay? And we said that there are two ways that the remote networks could be learned. Either the router will need to learn all the, you know, remote networks using um, static routing, whereby you, the network administrator, you are supposed to manually add the routes on the routing table. And that is what we are going to do today using uh, the static routing command. Or the routers could be configured with dynamic routing protocols to be able to exchange the routing, the, the routes, the remote networks automatically, all right? So the dynamic routing protocols is what we'll be covering in the, you know, the first, the first three chapters, the first two chapters actually of uh, the next module will be for dynamic routing and we will specifically talk about OSPF. Now, today I want us to continue from where we left on static routes. I did most of the foundational uh, uh, introductions yesterday. And so I will really like like we did yesterday. We were talking on, we were talking about the standard static routes, right? Standard static routes. We have not talked about the default route. We have not talked about the floating uh, host and so on and so forth. And we are going to. We did yesterday talk about the next hop static routes, where we were using the next hop IP address. And I have no doubt in my mind that all of us still remember the next hop IP version four and six very well. Then we talked about the directly connected static routes and we say the directly connected static routes, they use the next, the exit interface in their configuration. And then we have not talked about the fully specified. I think we did, but we will configure it. For the fully specified, you actually indicate both of them, both the next hop uh, IP address and the exit interface. We also mentioned that the next hop a static route is also called um, so, so called recursive recursive static route. You're going to meet that word during the preparation for your exam. So, do not say I didn't say that. It's they're also called recursive. And the major reason why they're called recursive is one thing that I remember very well. I didn't talk about it yesterday. So, the reason why we call it recursive static route, the next hop, is because from the router R1 here, R1 wants to reach. Um, Let's say we have already configured the static routes in this network and R1 needs to send a message to R3, sorry, to PC3, to PC3. R1 needs to send a message to PC3 and so, or to PC2 on the LAN of R2 or LAN of R3. And so what happens is that if we configure your network with the next hop static route, it means we are telling R1 that wherever you need to communicate to PC2 or PC3, you need to use this next hop IP address, which must be the next hop uh, uh, of interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 0, or this interface IP address, which will be 172.16.2.2, all right? So once we do that, then what you're telling the router is that the router needs to forward it, that information to that, let me do that, yeah. So the router needs to forward the information to the next hop IP, which will be one, 172.16.2.2 uh, here. Okay. That's two, that's two. And so the thing is this. Uh, 
if the router has to send a message to R2 through this interface, all right, if the router has to send a message uh, to, to R2 through this interface, two things that the router has to know. Remember this router R1 has an exit interface, has an exit interface uh, G00 and uh, G, I mean, a serial 0 slash uh, 0 slash 1. So what will happen is this. Before the router can know the next hop or the next router's IP, the router must first check what is the exit interface. Remember, all this information will be in the routing table, which means that the router is going to do two things. One, the router must know the exit interface. Then the router must now determine how to reach that next hop. OK, and so what that means is that the router checks. At the routing table twice. First is to know. Uh, first is, is to know the exit interface and secondly is to know. Uh, sorry, the first one is to know check which where is the to reach the next hop within the routing table. Remember you saw the routing table yesterday and the next hop is part of that which is indicated within the routing table. So the router will first check what is the next hop IP. All right, so the router checks the routing table, then it sees this is the next hop IP. All right, then the next thing the router has to determine is how do I reach it? Through which exit interface do I reach it? Serial zero slash one slash zero. So the process of looking at the routing table twice, one is to check the next hop and two way, and sec second is to know the exit interface. That twice looking at the routing table is what is called uh, the recursive, recursive, all right? That is where the word recursive is, and that's why we call it, we call them recursive static routes. So there's that time interval of doing that uh, twice checkup. And that's why uh, it has been recommended that using the exit interface or using both of them tries to save some time because the router you know, spends a little bit of microseconds trying to check the routing table twice. But when you use exit interface, the router will know. So long as it is sent through this exit interface, it's going to reach the next hop. Or if you use both of them for the fully specified, you must specify the interface and the next hop. All right. So that was just about the way. Now, what I want us to do right now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is I want us to go exactly where we left yesterday. And that was actually um, that was on a, on a, on a, uh, uh, yes, that was on our on, within our syntax checker. And the specific syntax checker we were working on was actually this one right here. And I still remember it very well. So let me just uh, be able to bring it here. This was the same topology. And we, of course, still remember what the next hops were. All right. So uh, just let me zoom this again to be able to make it possible for us to see it. So I'm going to start again at this syntax checker. And I have no doubt in my mind, you know how to get your next one. If you cannot remember still anything, make sure you check the video that I posted uh, today. I don't think I posted it today yet, but I'm gonna post because I already have the link uh, here with me. So let's start. So configure an IPv4 next hop static route on R2 to network 192.62.2.0. We already did yes this yesterday. So from R2, from R2, we're going to this network here and we are saying it is next hop. So next hop IP will be to reach this network 2.0. The next hop must be the IP address of serial 0 slash 1 slash 1, which is 192.168.1.1. All right, and that's exactly what is here. So we say IP route. Sorry, IP route 192.168.2.0. And subnet mask 255.255.255.0. And the next hope is there, 192.168.1.1. And that's good to go. The network configure fully specified static route going to network 3.0 here. Using uh, fully specified the interface and the next hope is actually here. So from previous knowledge we did yesterday, we say IP route. Um, 192.168.3.0 uh, 
Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 and the exit interface is G0 slash 0 slash 1. Okay. And the next hop is uh, 172.16.2.1 and we are good to go. Oh, 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 oh. What did I do? What did I do this one? 1.26.3.0.255.255. So G. 0 slash 0 slash 1, 172.16.2.1. You must enter the exact and full command. I don't know where I went the problem, but let me sort it out. So the command is IP, graph. Maybe there was an extra spacing that might have caused the problem. 192. No, it's supposed to be 172. I think that's where I went wrong. 172.16.3.0. Submit mass is 255 to 255 to 255 to 0. And the next hop is 172.16.2.1. Oh, the exit interface. I'm a bit disorganized here. Sorry about that. G0 slash 0 slash 1. And that should be OK. Then you need to configure an IPv6 next hop static route on R2 to this network. This is the next hop address of this one. All right. Very, very, very. Uh, good. So this is an IPv6 uh, next hop static route. So you say IPv6 route uh, 2001 colon DB8 colon affair colon 2 double colon slash 64. Next hop is 2001 colon uh, DB8 colon cafe colon one, double colon one, all right? And that's good to go. Then you need to configure fully specified IPv6 static route on R2 to that network. We say IPv6 route, 2001, colon DB8, colon a card, colon three, double colon slash 64. And the exit interface G0 slash 0 slash 1. And the next exit interface is no, the next hop IPv6 is actually leak local FEA double colon 1. And we are actually good to go. They want us to exit, exit out of this, and they want us to display only IPv4 static routes. So we say show IP route static. All right, and you can obviously we saw that yesterday because this is just a repetition. We couldn't start where we left yesterday because this is syntax checker. All right, issue the command display only IPv6 static routes on the routing table of R2. So you say show IPv6 uh, route route static. Show IPv6 route static, and we can be able to see the IPv6 static routes here. Uh, of course, display the letter S right there. All right, let's move on. Configure directly connected IPv4 static route. We are now logged into R3, by the way. Directly connected IPv4 static route on R3 to uh, network 172.16.3.0. We see the exit interface, serial 0 slash 1 slash 1. So we say um, IP route 172. 16.3.0, subnet mask is slash 24, 255.255.0, and we use a small s for the interfaces, f0 slash 1 slash 1, and we are good to go. Configure directly connected IPv4 static route on R3, network 1.0, 1.7.16, and we use the exit interface because it's directly connected. So IP route 1.72, that's 16, that one, that zero, subnet mask is slash 24, 255, 255, uh, zero, and the exit interface is S0 slash one slash one, and we're good to go. We do another directly connected to network 17216, 2.0 on R3, using the exit interface parameter, say IP route 172.16, Dot two dot zero. Submit mask is two five five 
255 to 255 to 0. And then we go to the exit interface S0 slash 1 slash 1. And that's good. Another directly connected to network IPv6 actually, network 2001, colon DB8, colon a card, colon 1, double colon slash 64, and you use the exit interface parameter. So you say IP. V6 route, I say 2001 colon DB8 colon a card, sorry, a card colon 1 double colon slash 64 and the exit interface S0 slash 1 slash 1. We do another direct connected IPv6 static route to network a card colon 3. So say IPv6 route 2001 colon db8 colon a card colon 3 double colon slash 64 the exit interface s0 slash 1 slash 1 and we are good to go another directly connected ipv6 address to a card colon 2 uh, double colon you say ipv6 route 2001 Colon DB8, colon a card, uh, two DB8, colon a card, colon two, uh, double colon, slash 64, and the interface S0 slash 1 slash 1, the exit interface, and you're good to go. We need to exit as usual, and we display only IPv4 static graphs so the routing table. Command is show IP route static. Show IP route static. And we can see we are now have on R3, three static routes here. Okay, already there with exit interface, you know, with the next of, uh, no, I mean, exit interface parameters here. And you can see to reach all those three networks, we, this is R3, all right? R3 needed to reach the networks 172 16, 1.0, 172 16, 2.0, and 172 16, 3.0. The only next the, the exit interface they use is S011 here, serial 0 slash 1 slash 1, to go to any of those three networks. And you can see the result is here on the routing table. All right. We need to display only IPv6 static routes on R3. So we say show IPv6 route static and you can see our three uh remote networks here apv6 networks together with the uh you know the exit interface parameters of course are uh, right here and one is the eddy of all static routes whether ip before or ip version 6 wonderful wonderful so the next thing i would like us to do right now is having talked about the standard route all right, then next hop, static routes, the directly connected is the exit interface and the fully specified and the fully specified static routes. OK. OK. All right, so the next thing that I want us to just talk about right now is I want us to talk about now uh, what a default static routes. What is a default static routes? And that is something of so much interest that I would like us to see here. And I will do that by checking at this topology. This is a topology that I would like us to. Let me just zoom this out, uh, zoom it out a bit so that, yeah, at 100. Now, looking at this diagram here, what I want you to note is um, one thing here. Uh, R1, R1 is connected to PC1, okay? And R1 is also connected to the internet, okay? So looking at looking at uh, the router R1, R1 is actually called a stub router. Why? Because R1 has only one connection to the internet, all right? R1 must go to the internet through R2, no any other way. And this network here, 
only has one way to the internet, which is you know obviously through R1 to R2. So a network with only one connection to the internet is called a stub network. A stub network. They do not have any other way. They only have one way to the internet. So this is a stub network, and this R router is a stub router. Now the thing is this, that you know, uh, since R2, all right, since R2 is the one connected to the internet, we will decide, you know, that to 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 be able because router R2 cannot be able to save in its routing table all the stat, all the routes, all the remote networks within the internet. It's very important for you to note. R2 cannot be able, actually uh, both R2 and R1. R2 cannot be able to store all the uh, all the remote networks within its routing table because the routing table has a certain capacity. All right, it has a certain memory, and that memory is not too big. To occupy, I mean, to store all the remote networks within the internet. Okay, and so what happens? We will just store one network here or one route here, and it is a route that is used to reach all the remote networks. Okay, so you don't have to count because we have so many remote networks within the internet. You know, within the whole world, we can't store all of them within the routing table, and we can't configure them. And so what we do? We are going to configure sort of a universal route for reaching all the remote networks, and that's what we are calling a default static route. Okay, this default static route, uh, it has some very little and significant differences with the uh, the standard route we just configured. But the foundation is going to remain the same. The only thing that is going to change is that the default static route, we don't indicate the network address and the subnet mask. That is the only difference. We do not indicate the um, we do not indicate the uh, the default, the subnet mask and the network address. It's actually more simpler. But the only thing you need to know is that you need to know the either the next hop or the exit interface. Those are the only things you need to know. And that's why I was telling you it was important that you get to understand the concept about next hop or exit interfaces. So for example, in this diagram here, we want to configure router R1 with one route to reach all its remote networks. R1, we want to configure it only one route, but that route can be used to reach all the remote networks. You know, R1 has three remote networks. Okay, We have the remote network of R1, the LAN on R2, the one between R2 and R3, and the LAN on R3. All right. And so we we'll just go to this router R2, and we'll put a very simple command here. We'll just say IP route, and you put, instead of putting the network address, you put 0 .0 0.0.0.0, that is the part for the network address. And then for the subnet mask, we also put 0 .0 0.0.0.0, all right? And then we put the next hop. And what is the next hop? The next hop is 172.16.2, all right? Dot two. All right, so where the zero is here, we're gonna replace it with two. So that is the next hop. So default routes, very important. No network address, no subnet mask. You replace them with what's called a code zero. Code zero uh, subnet mask and code zero uh, 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 um, network address. And then we only put the next hop or the exit interface. That's all. And I think that's much simpler. That's much simpler for you. For IPv6, we do the same thing. Look at this. For IPv6, instead of using, you know, IPv4 has uh, 32 bits, and you can replace them. I mean, the 32 bits can just be, you know, four zeros because each zero represents eight bits. Each zero represents eight bits, which means those are going to be eight zeros, another eight zeros on the second octet, another eight zeros on the third octet, and another eight zeros on the fourth octet, and we replace, represent them just with 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, and the same thing will be for the net, for the subnet mask here. So for IPv6, it's simple. Remember, we did learn of a principle of shortening IPv6 addresses. And you say if an address in IPv6 is composed of contiguous zeros, all right? 
one of the ways of shortening a contiguous, I mean, a long IP version six address with so many zeros is we could represent all the zeros using just a double column. Okay. So if all the 128 bits of the IPv6 are all zeros, then we just use a double column here to represent all the zeros and the prefix length. Actually, the first double column represents the 64 zeros. Then the remaining prefix length. You know what the prefix length is? The prefix length is like the subnet mask of IP version 6. We call it a prefix length. And so the thing is, we will just represent this last 64 with one zero here. Okay. We remember we don't use two double columns in the same IPv6 array. So we will just out of the 64 zeros, 64 zeros, all the 64 zeros, all of them. All right. We will just pick the first, we'll just pick, um, remember the leading zeros, all the leading zeros, all these leading zeros that are here, we'll omit all of them and we'll only pick the the only zero that is remaining here. So we'll omit all the leading zeros and we'll pick the last zero among the 64 bits and that is the zero we see here, all right? So we'll say IP route double column slash zero. That is like 0 to 0 to 0 to 0, 0 to 0 to 0 to 0, but for IPv6, all right? So we'll use a double column to represent, a double column slash uh, zero to represent the default route for IPv6 and then you put the next hop here or the exit interface or both of them. So just remember default route for IPv4, 0 to 0 to 0 to 0 space for then 0 to 0 to 0 to 0, then put the next hop or exit interface or both of them. For default IPv6, you will use, um, you will use the double column, double column uh, slash 64, okay? Double column slash 64. Sorry, double column slash zero. Double column slash zero. So that is that. Uh -huh. Of course, the next hop or the exit interface or both of them. All right. Now, so I want us now to put that uh, on implementation so that we are able to. Uh, to be able to implement, okay? All right. Okay. Let's see how this works. Let's see how this gets to work. So one thing I need to note first before we actually continue is that for IPv4 routes, when you'll be checking the routing table, all right, the routing table will be having something very funny. The S, since these ones are called default static routes, it will have the S, which represents static routes. Okay. But it will also be having an asterisk, which means it is a candidate of a default route, candidate default. All right. So that's why we call it default static route. So it is first a static route, but it is a default route. So you'll see that with an asterisk. But that is only in IPv4. In IPv6, you will not see the asterisk. You will only see the S alone. It's important just to note that. And you can see that here for IPv6, it's just an S. It does not have the asterisk. But you know the double column slash zero still remain, and the S means it is it is static. The S means it is static. So let's let's do one of our own here. So we are in we're going to do it uh, in R3. Let me just zoom this in. Sorry. All right, so we are in R3 here. And at R3, we're going to configure default route to reach, you know, uh, all the remote networks of R3, which are currently three of them. So we are told configure an IPv4 default static route on R3 to reach all remote networks. Use the next hop IPv4 address. Exactly. You're just told to use the next hop IP. You don't know what it is, so that's what we need to know what it is. So from R3 here, from R3, I actually need someone from the uh, from the meeting. I want someone from R3 re going to the remote networks. I want someone to tell me what is the next hop IP because we need it. Someone tell me what the next hop IP from R3 to the remote networks. 
Just uh, turn on your mic and speak. Someone? Just anyone, anyone, please. What is the next hop from R3 to the re remote networks? Someone? Someone, someone, someone. I need someone to pick up that. What is the next hop? From R3 going to the remote networks. The next router's IP address. Okay, I just need someone to try. You don't have to be perfect. Just give it a try. Someone, someone try, someone to try. Uh, Fred, Amanya, Lovins, someone I need to try. Unless uh, you guys were not in the meeting yesterday. Okay. 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 That's okay. So, like we said yesterday. Okay. Yes. S S zero slash one slash one. So that is the interface. What is the IP address of that interface? One and two dot one sixty eight dot one dot zero dot slash twenty four. So that is the network address. Now I need the IP address of this interface, this one here. Okay. You replace this zero with something. Can you try, Fred? Yes. Oh. Okay. One eighty two dot one sixty eight dot one dot two slash twenty four. Very good. So one dot two. That will be the next hop. Thank you very much, Fred. Thank. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, guys. That is our next hop. So next hop means the next routers from R3. If R3 wants to go to the network, uh, the LAN on R2, or this LAN on R1, or the link, the network between R2 and R1, the only, the, the, the R3 must send that message through R2. And what we are calling the next hop is the IP address of the, the interface entering to R2. And you, this, this network here, its network address is 192.168.1.0. But when you see dot two here, when you see dot two, you replace this zero with that two. And that's how we get 192.168.1.2. And for this interface here, we replace one with zero and we say 192.168.1.1. And that's how we give uh, those devices um, you know, the next hop. So the next hop that we need actually right now is 192.168.1.2. And that's what is needed here. So we'll say IP route uh, 0, .0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.0 space 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, space. Then you say 192.168.1.2. That's all that we needed to be able to do this. So press enter and you can see that has been validated. You can see that we have configured the next, uh, the default static route using the next hop parameter. Then you're told to configure an IPv6 default static route on R3, reach all remote networks, and you need to use the next hop IPv6 address. And we need to know that. From R3, the, the one we just talked about was IPv6, uh, sorry, IPv4. So the one for IPv6 will be 2001, colon DB8, colon cafe, colon one, double colon two. So you, put these two after the double colon. You don't have to put slash 64. So 2001 colon DB8 colon cafe colon one double colon two. These two, since this network is being shared by these two routers. So cafe colon one double colon two, and that's what we need here. So we say IPv6 route, we put double colon slash zero, but because this is default, but then you say 2001 colon DB8, Colon cafe, colon one, double colon two. All right, the address that we just saw there, and you can see that is accepted. We are told to exit and uh, display only static routes in the routing table. So you say show IP route static. 
show IP route 30. Only IPv6 route. Show IPv6 route static. Show IPv6 route static. And that is how we configure the default route. That's how we configure the default static route. Very, very important. Now, having looked at the default static routes here, I now want us to we just reduce this to standard. Uh -huh, yes. I now want us to look at what is called floating static route. And this is a very interesting one. This is a very, very interesting one to talk about. So for floating static routes, what happens is that this is our backup static routes. It's actually creating a backup. What do I mean by backup? From branch, we know that the branch network can want to communicate with the headquarters, HQ here, all right? But branch has two options. And you can see what branch is saying here, that I prefer to reach the HQ router using the private link, one link. You see this private one link here? So people within this, the branch company, can actually communicate with the headquarters using a link passing through a private wider network. But branch says that if that link ever fails through the uh, private one, I can use a floating static route connecting to the internet as a backup. So this will be a backup route so that when the other one fails, then to ensure continuity of internet connectivity, the branch will actually be using this backup link to still be able to reach the HQ. And that is very important. Now, we need to see how to configure the floating static route. And that is something very, very important for us. So to do that, uh, looking at what we are having here, looking at what we have here, uh, the floating static route, it's configured using an element that we call uh, an administrative distance. Yesterday, we did say that all static routes have an AD of one, whether it's IPv4 or IPv6. And so what we are going to do is that the floating for every static route must be configured with an AD which is higher than one. Any number more than one will do. And so a good example could be this. Looking at this uh, example we have here, we are going to configure in R1 here, a default route to reach the remote networks such that our we are going to have a primary route and a secondary route. The primary route is the main route. The secondary route is the backup route. So that our primary route needs to go through interface 172.16 2.2, which is here, 172.16.2.2 here. All right, this is for this network, and that's going to be the next hole. Then if this link going through R2 to the remote networks ever fails, then R1 can actually follow right here through R3 to still reach those remote networks. And so we're going to say IP route 0 to 0 to 0, 0 to 0 to 0. Then this time around, we put this other next hop here which is going to be 10.10.10.2. See right here, where zero is replaced with two. Okay, and then because the AD of every static route is one, as we have already seen, we are going to give it the backup route, an AD of five, any number more than one. Because the routers, if you configure those two routes, the router will only use one at a time. The only time that the second backup route will be used if is the link through R2 ever fails, okay? Because the routers will always choose the route with the lowest administrative distance. This one is one by default, and so it's going to take precedence. If that route fails, then the only next AD or the next route with the, uh, another AD will be the backup route, which is, will be going through R3. And you can see it's given an AD of five. So you put the next hop IP, put a space, and then you put the AD. Look at for IPv6. IPv6 route, double colon slash zero. We put the next hop. Look at it. R1. The next hop is 2001, colon DB8, colon a card, colon two, double colon. Double colon two. And you can see that here. That is our primary route. Then the backup route will pass through R3 here. Through R3. And that will be 2001 colon db8, colon feed, okay, colon 10, double colon, 2. 
double colon, two here. And you can see that here. And then we'll give it an AD of five here. And that's how we configure those particular routes. So let's try. Let's try. Let's be able to try that here. Okay. Uh, right, right here. So let me just uh, uh, zoom this in and let's see how it goes. So we're going to do exactly the same thing on R3. This time around is from R3. R3 wants to communicate with its remote networks and R3 is going to, I think, have next hop of 192.168.1.2. Where is 1.2? 192.168.1.2, which means this is going to be the primary route then this is obviously going to be the secondary route from R3's perspective. So we're told, configure an IPv4 default static route uh, on R3 using the next hop address uh, of 192.61.2. So IP route 0 .0 0.0.0.0 space 0 .0 0.0.0.0. Then you say 192.168.1.2. Right, and that's it. Press enter, and then we are told to configure a default static route on R3 using the next hop of 10.10.10.1, which is that one. That is this interface here 10.10.10.1. So that is there, and the AD is 5, of course. So IP route 0 .0 0.0.0.0 space 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 space. Uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 1, and then squeeze and then put a 5, and you're good to go. Good for, for, that. for IPv6, again, we also say we need to configure default static route on R3 using the next hop of uh, the one provided there. So you say IPv6 route, uh, double colon, slash 0, then 2001, the next hop, IPv6 address, db8 colon cafe uh, colon one double colon two. and we press enter and you configure the backup route which has an AD of five you say ipv6 route 2001 colon db8 colon feed colon pen double colon one oh Sorry, that was the next, that is the exit interface. I need to put here double colon slash zero. And then I need to add one at the end there. So IPv6 route, double colon slash zero, put the next hop IPv6 address, then put our AD, which is five. And we are good to go. Okay. All right. Exit the configuration and display IP4 routing table. So we say exit. We say we are not told only. We just told to display the IPv4 routing table. We say show IP route. Show IP route, and you can see our table is actually right here, and the default route is actually here. Uh, and the next hop was this one. One thing to note is this: the routing table will only have the one route at a time. Both routes cannot be stored within the routing table. All right. So the backup route will is not stored in the table, but it is floating just from the name. It's actually floating somewhere. And the moment this route goes down, then that backup route will now be installed within the routing table. That is very important for you guys to note. For IPv6 route, you say show IPv6 route. Show IPv6 route. And of course, you'll be able to see our default route for IPv6, only one at a time, appearing within the table. That's that. Uh, so let me uh, just go back. OK. Then we need to learn the very last route that we need to learn is called a host route. The only thing, other thing we need to learn is so called a host route. And how does a host route work? Ladies and gentlemen, the host route works this way. The host route is this. So we have an ISP, which this is your internet service provider. 
And this is our router, our home router. This is the router in your house. And the ISP provides you some services. Might be DNS, might be you know DHCP, for example, so on and so forth, or mail services or Google services. And so what's going to happen is that you need your PC, uh, sorry, your router or the devices in your network to communicate with this ISP server here. And what we're going to do is that we are going to only configure a, an IP address of this server, not the whole network. Only the IP address of this server, we are going to configure it as a root or as a route within our router. Okay, so we're going to add this. This server is actually remote to our branch router because for a branch to reach the server, branch has to go through ISP, and that's how we know that it is actually a remote, on a remote network. So we'll add the single, the IP address of this one will be added, there, and I'm going to show you how it's done. Now to add a single, to add a single uh, IP address of one single host to the routing table, something fun is going to happen. So you say IP route, okay? Instead of putting the network address, you put the IP address. So you say 209.165.200.238. Then this time around, instead of putting the subnet mask provided, which is slash 27, which is 255.255.255.224, you put the total slash 32, which is 255 everything. So 255.255. The 255, the 255, and then you put your next hop IP and you're good to go. For IPv6, you say IPv6 route, put your network, but you don't put with slash 64. You know the total number of bits in IPv6 is 128, so you put it with slash 128, and then you put the next hop IPv6 address. That's how we configure that. And actually, want us to see if we can be able to crack that. Let's see if we can crack that right here. So we have been given, um, let me just zoom this in again, uh, and minimize this here, and uh, can zoom one more time, correct? And what we are going to be doing is, we are going to, yeah, we're going to configure what you're told. So we are told display the routing tables on the branch router. We need to see the IPv4 route. Okay, so you say show IP route. And looking at here, we don't have any static routes. The only routes we have are the, the local routes. These are routes of the devices that are directly connected, okay? For IPv6, say show IPv6 route. And you can see that we don't have any IPv6 static routes, as you can see here. They're only local routes. So we are given instructions here, and we are told that we need to configure, enter the global configuration mode. Okay. We need to enter the global configuration mode. Yeah, so enter the global configuration mode, configure the following. So say, con, configure terminal, all right. Then you need to configure a static IPv4 route to host on this address here and exit the, and uh, an exit interface of serial zero slash one slash zero. Simple, it's say IP route, 209.165, sorry, not 2009, 209.165.200.238. Okay, and the subnet mask is 255.255.255. Sorry, 255. And the exit interface is S0 slash 1 slash 0. And that is perfectly done. Then we need to configure an IPv6 route as well. Say IPv6 route. And we put the host addresses given here. Uh, 2001 
colon DB8, colon a card, colon, no, double colon. Okay, slash 128, and the interface is S0, slash 1, slash 0. And you can see that is actually uh, well done here. So the difference is only you put the exact IPv6 address or IP address, and you put the total subnet mask. For IPv6 is 128, for IPv4 is slash 32, which is 255 to 55 to 55 to 55. And so if we exit this interface and we need to display IPv4 and IPv6, it's first by showing IPv4, we say show IP route. And you can see the routing table is now having is uh, host out here. And show IPv6 route. And that is also having our IPv6 route over here, IPv6 out over here all right and now so this is all that we needed to learn uh here and this is very interesting we will go at a stage of implementation but at this point in time i would like us to uh first look at um we look at some uh trouble uh shooting issues before we can be able, uh, you know, just to uh, bring this class to an end. So what I want to do right now is having uh, learned about this, the best I can do is to give you some assignments uh, to do, and then we're gonna do one challenge at the very end and we should be good to go, okay? So you might want to just note down, um, so 15 to eight, is the first one 1528 please do that 1528 then 1534 1534 that's the assignments then 1544 1544 for floating static clouds and eventually 1557 1557 and the last one is 1561 1561 all right so that's uh for your assignment for that for you know uh, configuring IPv4 and IPv6 uh, static routes. IPv4 and IPv6 static routes. Now, 